This is the Husqvarna HVT52. But in fact, Husqvarna didn't make this mower at all. It's actually made by a company called Flymo. They're the largest manufacturer of lawn mowers in the United Kingdom. And they used to sell equipment in the United States in the 70s and 80s. They left the market and they never returned. So Husqvarna at one point in the late 90s picked up this one particular model to import. They did so very briefly and it did not sell very well. In the UK, lawns tend to be much smaller than the US counterparts. So these mowers are designed for a smaller lawn in mind, but they have some incredibly unique features. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you on a tour of the mower. If you enjoy this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd also click subscribe. So one of the things you're gonna notice right away, there's no wheels, obviously. That's why it's a hovering mower, and it does, in fact, hover on a cushion of air. It uses a Honda engine. It's actually a GCV 135, and it's a 4.5 horsepower engine. This is an engine that you see in many mowers in the United States. Because there's no wheels and it's a little bit less stable, they've identified this spot here where you actually are supposed to step on it when starting. If you don't do this, when you do the pull start, the mower will really lift off the ground, so you do need to brace it. You'll see that it's got an integrated handle, and it also can collapse for storage and um, take up less space. These mowers sell incredibly well in the United Kingdom, but in the U.S. they hardly sell at all. One of the key differences is, overseas, petrol or gasoline mowers do not sell very well at all. In the United States, that's mainly what people buy. But overseas, you may see a modern version of this mower, and you'll see it running on electric power. The body of this mower is also made of a plastic, which doesn't seem like a great thing, but in fact, it's actually a very, very thick plastic, and in practice, these are rarely replaced. These can handle quite a bit of abuse, rocks, debris, and whatever else you'll encounter when you're mowing the lawn. One other unusual feature is the control handle. That's it. In the U.S., we have a lot of what we call dead man handles, and those prevent it so that if you drop the handle, the mower stops. That isn't the case with this mower, so this mower just keeps going and going. It's not the safest thing, but that's how it is. So one of the areas that this mower is phenomenal on is very, very steep slopes. And you may not be able to tell here, but this is an incredibly steep slope. So when I use a push mower on it, this area is very difficult. It's easy to lose control of mower. And actually, if you're going sideways, you can even drop the mower um, on itself or flip it over. So Now as you're watching this, one thing I know you're thinking is that these leaves are just blowing all over the place. Now first off, these leaves are soaking wet. They're really heavy, heavy, thick leaves. And the mower is actually doing a pretty good job mulching them. Now remember, there's air shooting out of the bottom, so definitely some leaves are blowing around. But if you really look closely, a lot of the leaves are just disappearing. So the blade underneath is really doing a pretty good job to mulch these leaves. Now this is not really what the mower is designed for, so I was actually pretty impressed at the job it did. So some final thoughts on this mower. And is it in fact the rarest mower in the United States? Well. That's sort of up for debate, but in my area, it's pretty rare. I've never seen one of these around. In fact, this was pretty difficult to acquire one of these. So on my lot, I use this mower because I have lots of tree overhangs on the edge of my property. You could use a weed whacker. It takes you all day. You got to hold that weed whacker up in the air. And in my case, it'd be for an hour plus. With this mower, it's great. I stick it under those overhangs and I essentially jam the mower 
right into those areas, but then I can mow sideways, and that's really what makes the difference. So if you come across one of these mowers on Craigslist or even eBay, I'd recommend that you get one if you have a lot of slopes. And you can decide for yourself if this is something you want to look for, but at the very least, I hope you learned something new and saw something pretty unusual. Thanks for watching.